Hi students, as a part of carbon nanotubes, today I am going to explain you about the properties or characteristics of carbon nanotubes. So first property or characteristic of uh, the carbon nanotube is uh, it is highly stable. It is highly stable. Highly stable. Now we have to discuss why this particular carbon nanotube is highly stable. This particular carbon nanotube is highly stable because it is a two dimensional structure. It is a two dimensional structure or two dimensional matrix. It is a two dimensional matrix. It is a two dimensional matrix with network structure comprised of so many carbon carbon bonds. Comprised of so many carbon carbon bonds. It is a two dimensional matrix with network structure comprised of so many carbon carbon bonds and whatever the bonds which are present between the adjacent carbon and carbon atom or uh, the covalent bonds or the covalent bonds or the covalent bonds now when we know that uh, the covalent bonds are weaker than ionic bonds now why we are saying that the carbon nanotubes even though they possess the covalent bond between the adjacent carbon atom it is highly stable because the difference between the normal molecule and the network structure molecule is in the case of the normal molecule the covalent bond is strong is strong but it is not strong as such as the ionic bond. But in the case of network structures such as the carbon nanotubes, such as carbon nanotubes and other substances, the covalent bonds which are present in between the adjacent carbon atoms, uh, carbon atoms uh, are strong as the ionic bonds. So since Whatever the covalent bonds which are present in between the adjacent carbon atoms in the network structure is as strong as the ionic bonds and as this carbon nanotube is a network structure, definitely what we can say, we can say that whatever the covalent bonds which are present in between the adjacent carbon carbon atoms are strong as the ionic bond based upon the stuff what I have explained to you. So this is the reason it is highly stable. It is highly stable because it is a two dimensional matrix with a network structure and in the network structure the covalent bonds uh, are stronger as or strongest as the ionic bonds. So coming to the second property or characteristic of uh, the carbon nanotube. Its melting point is high. Its melting point is high. Its melting point is high. Now why its melting point is high? So melting point depends upon the strength of the bonds between the adjacent atoms. Now already I have explained clearly with you that this particular carbon nanotube is a two dimensional matrix which is a network structure comprised of very strong covalent bonds which are strong such as the ionic bonds. Now in order to reach the melting point, whatever the bonds which are present, whatever the covalent bonds which are stronger as such as the ionic bonds should be cleaved or broken up. broken up. So that is the reason this particular carbon nanotube will have the high melting point due to its network structure and the strong covalent bonds which are present between the adjacent carbon-carbon atoms. 
and its melting point is approximately 3400 Kelvin approximately 3400 Kelvin now just imagine just imagine how strong it is how strong it is its melting point is 3400 Kelvin right. now the first property or characteristic of uh, the carbon nanotube is it is highly stable highly stable and the second characteristic is melting point is high melting point is high so now let us see the third characteristic of uh, this particular carbon nanotube the third characteristic of uh, this particular carbon nanotube is it's one of the mechanical property it's one of the mechanical property that is Hence modulus. Hence modulus. Hence modulus. This is one of the mechanical property. Hence modulus is almost closer to one terapascal. Almost closer to one terapascal. One terapascal. Right. So now, what do you mean by? Young's modulus. I am not going to enter in detail about the Young's modulus as it is a mechanical property. But do remember that Young modulus is is the measure of stiffness of the solid material. It gives the information about the stiffness of the solid material. Now, the Young modulus of the carbon nanotube is around one terapascal. May just imagine how stiff it is. So. Since the Young modulus of uh, this particular uh, carbon nanotube is uh, around uh, one terapascal, it is stiff as the diamond. And what is the value of one terapascal in Pascal? One terapascal is equals to ten power twelve pascals. Ten power twelve pascals. Ten power twelve pascals. Now coming to the multi-walled carbon nanotubes. Coming to multi walled carbon nanotubes, in the multi walled carbon nanotubes, the Young modulus is 1.8 terapascal. 1.8 terapascal in the case of multi walled carbon nanotubes. So 1.8 terapascal means 1.8 into 10 to the power of 12 pascal. Just imagine the stiffness of that particular uh, multi-walled carbon nanotube. Multi-walled carbon nanotube. Now the stiffness of uh, the multi-walled carbon nanotube is more because of its complex structure. Because more is the complexity of the structure. More is the network in the structure. More is the network in the structure, more is the stiffness of that particular structure. So if you see the multi-walled, it is very, very complex structure. That is the reason it is associated with the high Young's modulus value. So this is about the third property associated with the, this particular carbon nano carbon nano. Now, next property is it have high thermal conductivity. It have high thermal conductivity. It have high thermal thermal conductivity. Now it has high thermal conductivity, and the high thermal conductivity of the carbon nanotube is attributed to the strong sp2 hybridized carbon atoms present in the carbon nanotubes attributed to the strong sp2 hybridized carbon atoms sp2 hybridized carbon atoms carbon atoms so this particular sp2 hybridized carbon atoms will uh, make uh, or uh, decides the thermal conductivity of this particular carbon nanotubes carbon nanotubes and the next property is it has high electrical conductivity it has high 
electrical conductivity. Yes, high electrical conductivity. Now, this particular carbon nanotube has high electrical conductivity because of the two reasons. Because of the two reasons. The first reason is ballistic. The first reason is ballistic transport. First reason is ballistic transport. The reason for the high electrical conductivity. One of the reasons for high electrical conductivity is ballistic transport. Now what do you mean by ballistic transport? Ballistic transport is a physics phenomena where electron transfer at high speed within a medium. Electron transfer at high speed with the medium. Now, the trans ballistic transport in the case of carbon nanotube is high. So, electron transfer is uh, very fast. Sign electrons on the charge carriers. Now, when the charge carriers uh, are moving fastly, so definitely that particular uh, substance will have or poses the high electrical conductivity. So, this is one of the reasons why this particular carbon nanotube has a high electrical conductivity. The second reason is, second reason is, in the case of uh, the carbon nanotube, one carbon atom is attached to three other carbon atoms. One carbon atom is attached to three other carbon atoms. And we know that uh, Carbon has four valence electrons. Four valence electrons. Out of four valence electrons, three are involved in bonding with the, the three other carbon atoms, and one is left. One is left. Now, in the similar fashion, it comprises n number of carbon atoms. Since it comprises n number of carbon atoms, uh, what happens is the C of uh, the C. <coughs> The C of uh, delocalized electrons, C of uh, delocalized, C of delocalized electrons is developed uh, inside the carbon nanotube, is developed inside the carbon nanotube. So when the delocalization of electrons is taking place uh, in the particular uh, molecule or the substance, definitely that substance uh, will conduct the electricity. So these are the two reasons uh, for the high electrical conductivity of the carbon nanotubes. And uh, the last property or characteristic of the carbon nanotube which I am going to explain with you is uh, it is hydrophobic in nature. It is hydrophobic in nature. It is hydrophobic in nature. It is hydrophobic means it hates to dissolve in the water. It hates to dissolve in the water. How? That is whenever uh, this carbon nanotube uh, is uh, introduced into the water, it will not mix up with the water because the carbon nanotube comprises the carbon atoms. So since it comprises the carbon atoms, it comes under the category of organic molecule. So since it comes under the category of organic molecule, and we know or we are well versed that organic molecules are not soluble in the water rather they are soluble in the organic solvents only for example just take the benzene and try to dissolve in the water it won't be soluble in the water because it's organic molecule and all the organic molecules get soluble in the organic solvents only now as the carbon nanotube is one of the organic molecules we can say that why it is organic? Because it comprises only the carbon atoms in it. That's the reason it's organic. That is the reason it won't dissolve in the water. So while explaining the applications or uses of this particular carbon nanotubes, I will demonstrate uh, why this carbon nanotubes uh, will not undergo the dissolution in the water. So this is about uh, the properties or characteristics of uh, the common nanotubes, students. I hope you understood this topic. Thanks for watching.